Hi, today we're going to learn how AtScale can replace your SQL Server Analysis Services SSAS solution. First, a little bit about AtScale. AtScale is a semantic layer, just like SSAS, except it's much more open to the ecosystem. So whether you're talking to a data warehouse in the cloud or a data lake, AtScale's got you covered. And AtScale is going to leave the data where it is. No queue building, no ingest, uh, no separate infrastructure to manage. And AtScale will connect up any BI tool, not just Microsoft, the Microsoft stack. It also includes, of course, Power BI and Excel, but also Looker, Tableau, and a number of other tools. It also supports uh, that semantic layer to support your data scientists. That means uh, a Python connected through our AI link, so you can use AtScale and use that semantic layer in your Jupyter Notebooks or in your uh, ML applications like DataRobot. And you can also use it to build applications. So uh, let's talk a little bit about AtScale versus SAS. And first of all, let's talk about what is the same. AtScale looks just like SSAS to, your, to any application. So we support the MDX and DAX interface that comes with SSAS. That means that whether you're using Power BI or Excel, you're going to be able to connect natively using the built-in SSAS connectors. Uh, that means there's a minimum of, of porting, a minimum of changing users, users' behavior or habits. So where is it different? Well, first of all, it's different in that it will connect to data where it is. That means whether it's in a data lake like Hadoop or whether it's in a cloud data warehouse like Snowflake or BigQuery or Redshift or even Azure Synapse, uh, the data is going to stay where it is. That means you can access data as uh, on the fly. Um, there's no aggregation or no pre-compute. Uh, no cube building, which means you get full access to all the fidelity in your data warehouse. And like I mentioned, it supports um, um, not just MDX and DAX, but also SQL. So tools like Looker and Tableau um, can also be used with that scale, as well as all your Python um, and AI and ML based tools. It's going to scale with your data. There's no separate infrastructure to manage with that scale. That scale is a lightweight service that lives in the cloud. And, uh, and there's is no, uh, there is no storage or, or memory to, um, uh, to maintain. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pass all those queries right down to your data platform and make those data platforms uh, do the heavy lifting. It's going to also uh, allow you to blend data and using data virtualization. That means you can mix data from different platforms um, all, do, all within a single data model. And it supports uh, SSAS MD as well as tabular models. Uh, so you don't have to port away from your SSAS MD models. We're going to support those natively. Okay, let's talk about, uh, let's go ahead and, and show you how exactly it works. So let's go to the AtScale Design Center interface. I'm going to create a whole new uh, virtual cube. We call them virtual cubes or models. And I'm going to call it, SA, uh, I'm going to call it better than SSAS. Okay, that's going to create a, a whole new uh, virtual cube um, and take me to my canvas. So once I'm in my canvas, um, I see I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my uh, data sources pane. You can see I have a couple data sources here. Today I'm going to be doing this, uh, this particular uh, demo on Snowflake. Uh, a lot of you guys out there have Snowflake and, uh, and are looking to really leverage that platform. With that scale, you can do that without having to uh, without having to leave Snowflake. So the data stays in the Snowflake. You're going to use Snowflake and Snowflake Compute rather than having to create a separate uh, separate uh, set of infrastructure or build a cube. So I'm going to drag on my sales log um, uh, table. Now this is a table in Snowflake, and all I need to do now, since this is a table, it's on my canvas, is to turn it into dimensions and measures. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple measures. I'm going to create a sales amount. Um, you can see my sales amounts there. I'm going to go ahead and put it into a folder called sales metrics. You can see at scale is going to handle the default aggregation for you automatically. You can see it chose to use a sum. I'm also going to take my, um, my order quantity and drag that in and also put it into that sales metrics folder. So now I have a couple metrics. I can also create uh, calculations right here without having to leave my interface. I'll create a sales tax and I'll create it by saying sales amount. 
Dive to eight and a half percent. That's going to be a pass through query straight to uh, Snowflake. So now you see I have a calculation here that I can now use just like I did with my other metrics um, and use that right within my virtual queue. So there's no reason to have calculation script or any of that complex stuff that you normally have to use with SAS. You also are seeing that I'm not having to create uh, a data source view or a DSV first before I can start to model my cubes and create my dimensions and measures. You also will see is like I have a library. A library allows me to use um, um, to, to store my dimensions as conformed dimensions. So I'm just going to drag those onto my canvas like you see here. And then all I need to do with that scale, unlike SSAS, is just hook them up to my base fact table. A lot of like you, you do with, the, with your, um, your dimension view, dimension usage, here it's, it's much easier. So my product, uh, my product uh, key, my product dimension, I can just go ahead and hook that up like that. If I go to my preview screen here, you can see there's my metrics, my product metrics and my sales metrics. And you can see that I just got my product hierarchy that it inherited just by connecting and creating that relationship. For my dates dimensions, we have very easy role play. So I have a ship date dimension and I have an order date dimension. Very easy to play, do role play, role playing dimensions. You can see over here now I have my date dimension folder and I have ship dates and order dates. Sim that simple. I also have my customer dimension, so I can hook that up. Now watch what happens with my customer dimension. Once I hook that up, you can see that I have a bunch of different information, even geography rollups that are maintained there, just by connecting that up. That's because the customer dimension itself is its own model. Um, and as you can see here, in the, and even the geography dimension itself is its own model. So that's the beauty of that scale is you can use encapsulation, an object-oriented way of creating uh, nested dimensions um, and, and that, which really promotes reuse and uh, makes it very easy to create very complex models, but not with, in a complex fashion. So what about uh, product info? A lot of times you have nested fields. And that's very common with, with, with uh, data cloud, modern cloud data warehouses like Snowflake. Well, with that scale, we understand those nested fields. So I can create uh, a key called color and style, for example. At scale is going to turn those into virtual dimensions. And then all I have to do to turn them into a dimension is just drag them in. So at scale automatically handles degenerate dimensions very easily without any extra work. So now I'm ready to actually publish my new better than SAS virtual cube. And I'm gonna go and explore that now within um, Power BI. So by publishing a virtual cube like you just saw here, that means it's now available for query by any of my BI tools, my AI tools, or my applications. So let's go and first go to my Windows environment. And I'm gonna go, to, go ahead and log back in using single sign-on here. Um, this is all using Active Directory. And here you have Power BI. So how does that scale now get data or how do you, how do you connect Power BI to AtScale? Well, like I mentioned, um, AtScale is SSAS compatible, um, except I remember I didn't have to build a, a cube in AtScale, but I can use that, that native uh, driver, which means, um, and then just indicate the, connect, the, the server name for AtScale. There you see my server name. And you can notice I'm gonna be connecting live here. That means um, I'm using the same DAX connection that Power BI uses, which means you're gonna get excellent performance. Um, and, and there's my better than SAS cube that I just created just right before your eyes. And just like that, I'm gonna see my full semantic layer um, now appear all within Power BI without ever having to build a cube. So there you go, what I just saw there, just to show you, if I click on the model view in Power BI, you can see I have that full model view now in, in Power BI. Just like that, uh, you see my full view um, at, scale, uh, at scale by communicating through DAX. We have all the same um, metrics and dimensions and models all automatically here. No need to force your, uh, your Power BI users to have to remodel the world. It's already done for them and it's done once and done consistently. So now all I need to do is just go ahead and click on, on my metrics here. I'm gonna choose order quantity. 
Remember the color dimension was actually a degenerate dimension on a nested field in Snowflake. So all I need to do now is just open that up and choose my color and at scale will automatically generate the right, the right kind of SQL queries against your uh, Snowflake data warehouse and, uh, and, and do that all on the fly and do that at BI speeds. So there you have it. I created the semantic layer in just a few minutes and explored it with Power BI. You can do the same exact thing with Excel, Tableau, Looker, you name it, or any AI or ML tool or any application. You're gonna get the same answers, the same semantic layer, and that same ease of use, uh, regardless of how you choose to consume. Thanks for listening.